creation account necessarily. Tonight the debate is about the flood, but this is essential material. Oh, there we go. Genesis 1, 6. God said, let there be a firmament. The word firmament, shown later, means an atmosphere, a place where the birds fly. It mentions that in verse number 20, Genesis 1, 20. The fowl fly in the, open, in the heaven, in the open firmament of heaven. So the firmament is a place where the birds fly. Back in Genesis 1, 6, God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. Second Peter says scoffers are ignorant of how God made the heavens. The word heaven is plural in Second Peter chapter 3. There were three heavens. The first heaven is where the birds fly. Second heaven is where the sun, moon, and stars are. We call that outer space, mentioned in verse number 14 off the screen here. Second heaven, Genesis 1, 14. And the third heaven apparently is where God lives. Apostle Paul said he was caught up to the third heaven in Second Corinthians chapter 12. So there are three heavens. There used to be a layer of water above this first layer, above the atmosphere. And that's not uncommon. And many of the planets in our solar system have a vapor barrier, have a, a canopy, a cloud cover. And so, and the Earth itself has six or seven different layers to the atmosphere. There used to be a layer of water. Psalm 148 talks about the waters that be ab above the heavens. When God first made this world, there was a canopy of protective water above the atmosphere. The purpose being to shield the Earth from uh, outer space cosmic radiation and also to provide greater air pressure and to give the earth the greenhouse effect. So everything grew enormous in the pre-flood world. It filtered out the radiation. I'll skip through some things here from my normal presentation that I do at churches. Today, people are rarely over seven or eight feet tall. Robert Wadlow is almost nine feet tall, extremely rare. But pre-flood skeletons have been found of people like this one found in a coal mine in Italy. This one is 11 feet, six inches tall. There were seven or eight 12 foot skeletons found in a coal mine in West Virginia. Now the evolutionist wants you to think man started off small and we're getting bigger and better and stronger and smarter and we are the gods of this universe. The Bible says we were made in God's image. Man may have been 10, 12, 14 feet tall before the flood. They were living 900 years. It was a different world in that pre-flood canopy, under the pre-flood canopy, people and animals grew to be huge. Go ahead and skip up there if you would through all this up to uh, whatever number's next. Not only were the people much bigger before the flood, the animals were much bigger. Fossils of nearly every kind of animal alive today have been found in, in fossil form that are huge. Rhinoceros, 18 feet tall, have been found. Now the evolutionist says, the scoffer says, well, this lived, this was during the Jurassic period. Uh, the, there's no such thing as a Jurassic period, but the, the, this was in the pre-flood era. Animals were huge. Dragonflies with 36 inch wingspan have been found. Grasshoppers, two feet long. Cockroaches, 18 inches long, have been found fossilized. Cattails, 60 feet tall. I'll scan through this quickly. Beavers, eight feet long, have been found. Giants of all sorts have been found. Giant sharks, giant turtles, giant birds, 13 feet tall. Skeletons of enormous proportions compared to today's standards have been found. The Bible-believing creationist, like myself, says this was in the pre-flood era from the creation until the flood. For 1,600 years, it was a different world. Things grew huge. Everything was giant. Even the lizards grew to be huge. The lizards were the dinosaurs because lizards never stopped growing. Lizards in the pre-flood Garden of Eden conditions would grow to be enormous. And we have lizards of all types today that are miniature dinosaurs. And most of my research in cryptozoology has been on even some of the bigger dinosaurs, 25, 30 feet long, that are still alive. Like Loch Ness Monster, Lake Champlain Monster, Mokalee Membi, Ogopogo, and Lake Okanagan. And I can go on for hours just on that subject. There are some dinosaurs still alive. Go ahead and skip up to the next one there if you would, brother. I'm not saying there's millions of them, but there's a few. And the whole scenario of evolution is insane. After the flood, though, Genesis chapter 9 tells us two things changed. Man and animals were allowed to eat meat after the flood. In the pre-flood world, they didn't eat any meat. And today, everything is suffering. The whole creation is suffering and, and pain and travail. And God's going to fix it back like it used to be. Let me skip up to just a few here. Then we get into Noah's Ark. People say, no, wait a minute. Was the Ark big enough to hold all the animals? I believe even dinosaurs were on the ark. I've got a model here. This is a 1 600th scale of Noah's Ark. I got Engage animals from a uh, local hobby shop. They are too large for the ark scale. The ark should be six feet long in order for these animals to be the right scale. Inside here, I have uh, 21 different interesting observations about Noah's Ark that you may want to read before you decide the story is not true. Some interesting things, for instance, if Noah was 10 or 12 feet tall, like he may very well have been, he lived to be 950 according to the scriptural account, 
then the arc built by his cubit would have been much bigger. A cubit is from your elbow to your fingertip. I'm only 6'1", and my cubit is 21 inches. The standard cubit they use to measure things is 18 inches. Even with an 18-inch cubit, a small arc, there was plenty of room because Noah only had to bring, he could have brought the babies, bring young ones. That would be the obvious conclusion. I figured that out. I'm only 40. Noah was 600. I'm sure he figured out bring babies. Just be sure to get a pink one and a blue one. And they would be smaller. They would live longer after the flood's over, and that's why you're bringing them to begin with. So bringing young on the ark would conserve an awful lot of space. Plus, you only had to bring two of each kind, not two of each species. I taught biology for years. I'm very familiar with the classification system. But the skeptics will always say, well, you know, there's X number of species in the world, and they couldn't all fit on the ark. Well, not just a minute. True, there are 250 varieties of dogs. But Noah only had to have two of the dog kind on the ark. The Bible says he brought two of each kind. That would include the foxes, the wolves, the coyotes, the hyenas, and the dogs, all in two animals. In the last 4,400 years since the flood, there has been a lot of variation within the created kind. Ask anybody that raises anything, uh, any animals, a cattle breeder, horse breeder, pig breeder, corn raiser, anything, they will tell you there are, there's an awful lot of variation available, but it's always within limits. You can get bigger and bigger pigs, but you're never going to get a pig as big as this building. There are limits. And anybody that raises animals will tell you there are limits. And there has been a lot of variation since the flood, but that's not evolution. It's still the same basic kind of animal. The wolves and the hyenas and the dogs and the coyotes and the foxes are the same family. Now, our classification system of kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species wasn't made until the last couple of hundred years. And that is not at all what God was using. God said, Noah, two of each kind, not two of each species. So don't fall for that argument that he had to bring two of every individual species. There's been speciation. There's been a lot of interesting research about Noah's Ark. On Mount Ararat, right at the corner of Turkey and Russia and Iran and Iraq is Mount Ararat. There are two competing schools of thought on this. One group thinks, oh, excuse me, one group thinks the ark is actually on Mount Ararat, and it may be. There's another group who I know, Ron Wyatt, right here, had lunch with him one time, uh, talked to him several times. Another group that thinks Noah's ark may be this object right here, this boat-shaped object. The Turkish government thinks it is. They think the ark has collapsed in on itself and folded out. The structure there that I just showed you is 515 feet long, which is exactly 300 Egypt, royal Egyptian cubits. If that's the ark, I don't know. Tur here's it is right here. The Turkish government has built a visitor center, and they started construction on a highway, but the political uh, situation over there is very unstable. So they've kind of slowed things down. There is a full-time fellow there who lives there as, to keep people from stealing pieces of if they think that's Noah's ark. Anchor stones have been found. OK, go ahead and uh, skip up there, if you would, brother, to the next one. The credibility of the ark actually being there, there's a big CBS special on that, uh, and a lot of people say it is, and of course Time and Discover Magazine both wrote a retraction saying, oh, CBS didn't know what they were talking about, they should never have run that. See, the scoffers, uh, skeptics can't stand competition on a level playing field. They want to have the majority of the market and don't let anybody even see the other evidence for the other side. If it happens to support the other side, hey, we can't let them see that. That's why creation is not taught in our public schools, because the scoffers know it, it would overwhelm evolution. Evolution is a silly, crazy idea that doesn't, hold any, doesn't have any common sense to believe that. And so they don't want competition for their belief. They talk about the geologic column. Uh, let me back up just a little here. These scoffers talk about this geologic column, these different layers of strata. And I taught earth science and biology for many years. The geologic column doesn't exist any place in the world. The best explanation of the fossils that are found, like this human shoe print with a trilobite embedded in the toe and heel, and the evolutionist says trilobite lived 600 million years ago. There's a human shoe print where a man stepped on two of them. Polystrata fossils prove those layers are not different ages. All of those layers that you see in the fictitious geologic column were deposited rapidly during the one-year-long flood. The world was completely overwhelmed for one year.